Happy Friday, Hope College, last day of classes, yes. Hey, while we're clapping, we've got some prospective students checking us out. We want to welcome you to Hope College while you're here. It's an excellent place to be. We also have seniors that are graduating or seniors that are going to be on semester abroad or student teaching. We, we, we just want to, we want to love you. Well done, you guys. It's great to have you in this spot. Hey, um, one quick announcement. Um, Sunday night, our final gathering is a kind of modified lessons and carols. You're not going to want to miss this. In fact, you're going to you're want to get dressed up for this. You're going to want to, like, bring a friend and bring that friend's friend's cousin's sister's uncle. This is a night you want to be at. It's going to be fun and bright. So before we step into finals and the heaviness that can inspire, let's gather one last time into this space. And let's just worship the Lord. Sunday night, 8 o'clock at the gathering. Don't miss it. And look good. Look good. So on behalf of everyone on our campus ministry team, we just want to say thank you to you. This is, it's, you realize it's the end of the semester, right? Like today's the last day of class. Do you know this? Did you look at the syllabi, (laughs) the calendar? We've got all that figured out. It's been a long time since August when some of you rolled in for the first time or you're back on campus, and now we're in December. And we just want to say on behalf of everyone um, on our team, just thank you for a wonderful semester, worshiping and uh, what you give. It's inspiring to walk shoulder to shoulder with you for a season of your life. It's really a great, a great blessing. This is the time of year in my house when we start to make lists. Do you make lists at all? Christmas lists? The phone rang last week, and it was the voice of grandma and grandpa saying, what's on the kids' Christmas list? I love making lists. Ella, who's five, um, uh, can't write yet, so she just gives me pictures of what she wants. So this is a spa bed for a, for a doll. <laughs> for a doll. But, you know, it, it's fully kitted out. Yeah, this is her little, um, this is her, her little vanity, and uh, there's a curling iron in her hair for, for her doll. This is, this is what she's into. <laughs> Ella wants, she wants that. It's cool. She's probably going to get it. Trigvi actually, he's eight years old. Trigvi actually makes a list. So Trigvi's Christmas list. He wants the Madden 13 Wii U, the Super Smash Brothers Wii U, Nintendo Switch, iPod or iPhone. Dude's eight. (laughs) All right, brother, you're not getting that. He wants a Fitbit. My son's eight years old wants an Apple Watch. I'm not allowed to get an Apple Watch. Full set of baseball gear. Husky sweatshirt, he will get that. Russell Wilson jersey, 2018, already got that. Yeah, that's right. Lists are fun, right? You write out what you want, like to, to, to learn from each other. What, what's, on your, what's on your list is, is another way of saying, like, what do you most desire? What do you love? And that's, it's fun to kind of write out your Christmas list. What do you really want? What do you desire? Hope College, what's on your Christmas list? It's fun to write out lists. And it's even more important to kind of dig down into your soul to really write out that which you most want. Or maybe a more interesting question is, what is it you most need that would be on your list for Christmas this year? What do you need? What if I told you What if I made a claim that what you most want, or maybe more importantly, what you most need, has already been given to you? That whatever is most important that you could put on the list is already yours. It would be an amazing, amazing claim and promise. It would be an amazing gift. And I'm here to tell you some good news that that's, that has been given. What you most need has already been given to you in life. 
And I make that claim because of what I hear in this story I'm about ready to read. It's a story from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Hear the word of the Lord from the book that we love, the bush that burns and is never consumed. The scriptures begin here, verse 8. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, watching over their flock by night. And then suddenly, there was an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And then when the angel was gone and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known to them what had been told them about this child. And all who heard the shepherds were amazed at what they told them. But Mary pondered these words and treasured them in her heart. And the shepherds, the shepherds went back praising and glorifying God for all that they had seen and heard as it had been told to them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's an old story, familiar to many of you. Maybe so familiar that the sharp consequences of what it is saying has been dulled. But within this story is the declaration of a promise that what we most need, what we most desire, has been given. It begins with shepherds, probably about your age, young adults, out in the field, homeless, working. And then all of a sudden, under the big canopy of the stars, under that great expansive geography, an angel shows up. I wish I could have seen that. Because sometimes what I want to see more than anything else is the glory. Because glory in the Bible is thick reality. Glory is thick reality because glory emanates from God himself. The angel shows up before these shepherds about your age. No social standings or consequences, but God chooses them to announce to herald a fundamental truth that all the world has been longing to hear ever since humanity went east of Eden. The angel shows up, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and the shepherds, the shepherds do just what you would do in a situation like that. They're terrified. They back away, but the angel says, and I love the angel, because the angel, the angel gets to give the good news. The angel gets to give the joy. The angel gets to invite us into a new reality that we get to experience. You know, it's been said that it's better to give than to receive. That's what I think that this angel would have experienced. He was so excited to share with these young shepherds. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, for see, I am giving you Good news of great joy for all the people. I'm giving you good news of great joy for all, all, all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This is the revelation. Do not be afraid. I love that declaration because... If I'm honest with you, there are a lot of things in life I'm afraid of and that are worthy of our fear. But it's not this. This moment is a reminder to these shepherds and to us that there is a larger reality in which we live and move and have our being. Do not be afraid, for there is good news of great joy. This is the revelation that reverberates down the canyons of time to us today. Do not be afraid. 
Because to you is born, me and you in the whole world, to you is born a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. He is the promise fulfilled, the gift given as an embodied flesh for all people at all times and in all places. You see, the gift isn't something that we assemble or a football jersey that we'll grow out of. It requires no batteries, and you can't take it back. The gift given is none other than God himself for us. Jesus is the gift given. Jesus is the gift giver who is at the same time the gift given as himself wrapped in flesh. He who is the creator of all things steps into creation itself in order that the creation might be saved. And this is good news to all people. All people. Why is it good news? It has something to do with who the angel says this person is. He is a savior. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Now, if we go back to the beginning of chapter 2, it says, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus. The context of this story that we're hearing is one in which the people live and move and have their being under Roman rule and establishment. To use the words like Savior or Messiah or Lord is to ascribe royal deity that would have been best known in this context as Caesar Augustus himself. Caesar Augustus was the one who initiated the great Pax Romana, the great peace of Rome. But some biblical scholars say that that peace, that peace reaches only about 7% of the population. Only the few, the privileged, the powerful, the wealthy. But this story is contrasting that Caesar, that king with a different king, the king of the kingdom of God himself. And that kingdom is said to usher in a new reality, a peace that is for all the people, the rest of the 97%. In this reign, in this story, there is a God that shows up that includes everyone. This is a moment in time in your life where you're making really important decisions. You're figuring out who you are and where you want to go and what you want to do and what you want to be. But one of the most important things to figure out as you're making those decisions is not just who you are, but whose you are. This is a story that reminds us that you belong to something larger than yourself. Do not be afraid as you step into finals. Do not be afraid as you go home for Christmas break. Do not be afraid to have those hard conversations. Why? Because there's good news of great joy for all the people that includes you. This is what we most need. What we most need in life is not another value system. What we need most in life is God. A God who knows you, a God who loves you, but more importantly, a God that actually shows up in life. And this is a story that reminds us that God shows up. God makes it personal. God takes the time to put on flesh and walk among us in our shoes. God assumes all of our humanity that all humanity might be healed and saved. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. He is both human and divine, word made flesh. This Jesus is God's voice that shatters the silence. And he says, I love you. And this is what the shepherds see. They see this child wrapped in cloth in a manger, this fragile, vulnerable, innocent child will grow up and be the one who saves the world. He is the one who is the Messiah. He is the one who is king. He is the Lord of lords, God of God, hosts of hosts, which is why there's glory breaking in upon this creation, even now a thin place where we can hear with the multiple heavens, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The good news of Christmas, what we most need is what has already been given. In Christ, God gives us peace. And peace in this context means shalom. And shalom is wholeness, a connectedness with God and with each other and with creation and even with ourselves. 
on Trigvi and Ella's Christmas list, Jesus didn't show up. But that's okay. Because Jesus has already shown up for them. And I'm praying that one day they'll receive that good news gift. They will make it their own and they will live into the deep consequences of the kingdom of God. I pray that they will be a people who, like you, will embody what this good news is all about. And so as you launch into finals, as you launch into Christmas break, do so knowing. Do so knowing that you don't need to be afraid, that there's good news of great joy for you and for all the people. Amen? Amen. Go in peace.